In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate cash paid for interest when you're preparing the operating section of a statement of cash flows for a company that uses the direct method. So cash paid for interest is going to be equal to the amount of interest expense the company had for the period, and you're going to get that from the company's income statement, but then you're going to have to make a change based on what happened to the company's interest payable over the prior period. Okay, so if interest payable went down, so if it decreased, then you're going to add that to interest expense in terms of getting cash paid for interest, okay? You would figure whether interest payable went down or whether it went up uh, by looking at comparative balance sheets, okay? The most recent balance sheet uh, from the prior balance sheet. And so if it went up, if it increased the interest payable, then you would actually subtract that from interest expense, okay? And it makes sense if you think about it. If interest payable decreases, that means the company was paying off some interest that it owed before. And so that's a payment of interest. So we should add that to the interest expense incurred for the period. Now, the final part is a little more complex. And you, if you have never dealt with bond issuances and stuff, this might be a little hard for you to understand. But you are going to add any amortization of a bond premium. Okay, This is not saying amortization expense that it has to do with intangible assets. This is something totally different. Okay, I encourage you to check out the videos I have on bond uh, premiums and discounts if, if you want. Um, but basically, when you have a bond premium and you've amortized that over the period, that's going to get added. And the reason is, is that basically, if you think about the journal entry that's made when you amortize a bond premium, uh, so you're debiting interest expense, let's just say hypothetically for $85, and then you've got this uh, discount and that premium. So you've got a premium on the bond uh, that is, let's say, $15. And then let's say the actual cash paid, let's say they paid cash for the interest that it was $100. If you had that journal entry, uh, then that's basically saying this premium is, is reducing the interest expense. The interest expense is actually lower than the cash paid for interest. And so th that's what this bond premium is doing. Uh, but obviously, the premium has nothing to do with cash. So in this case, the cash flow effect would be 100, not the interest expense of 85. Okay. Now, if there's a bond discount that has been amortized over the period, the amortization of the bond discount is actually going to be subtracted from interest expense. Okay, so this, this part is pretty complex. If you don't quite understand this, I encourage you to at least focus on this part here where you got the interest expense and then you make an adjustment based on what happens to the interest payable. And I'm going to show you that one uh, in, in this example here. So let's say that we've got this company here. We've got comparative balance sheet. We've got an income statement. And we've been putting together in the previous videos a statement of cash flows uh, using the direct method. And we've been working on the operating section here. We derived our cash receipts. Uh, we had cash received from customers, uh, which came from the sales revenue, and then we converted it to cash basis. And we had cash payments uh, to suppliers, to employees, and now for interest. So we're trying to figure out what is the cash paid for interest. Well, we're going to start with the interest expense. So we go to the income statement. We see the interest expense is $10,000. Let's write $10,000 there. Now we need to look and see, well, what is the effect on interest payable over the, from the prior period? So in 2021, December 31st, uh, the balance sheet, uh, we had $3,000 of interest payable. Uh, then the next uh, balance sheet date, uh, so we have 1,000. Okay, so we actually went down. There was a decrease in interest payable in this case. So that's gonna get added. Okay, that's gonna get added. That's gonna be $2,000. That's gonna be added. Uh, and then we don't have here, We I, I did a simple example, we don't have any bond premium or bond discount being amortized, so we don't even have to worry about that in this example. So what's going to happen is this. We've got this 10, 10,000, and then we add the 2,000. So that is going to give us uh, $12,000. So I'll just write that 12,000. We'll just put it right here. So $12,000. So again, what this is saying is we're looking with the direct method. We're saying, okay, here's the cash that we have received. Uh, you know, we received this cash from customers, and then here are the cash payments that we've been going through. We've got the one to suppliers. We derived that from cost of goods sold, made some adjustments to employees. Uh, we got that from the wages expense, and then we derived that or changed that to a cash basis and got the 120,000. And then now the interest expense, the accrual basis, it was 10,000. But on the cash basis, the actual cash paid for interest during the period, 
we find is $12,000. So we're just going right down through. This is basically we are making here in the operating section of the, the direct method, uh, the statement of cash flow, we are actually making a cash basis income statement here. 